So hey everyone, welcome back to Rebecca's Colouring Arts and Crafts. So um, I'm just going to try and get some book re book reviews done as I can um, and get them posted along with the other things. Um, so I'm just trying to do the best I can um, with all you know is sort of going on. But basically my book review today is Court of Miracles by Kester Grant. So, first of all, I very much want to thank HarperCollins Australia for providing me with a copy of this book in exchange for review. I really did love it so much, and I was so glad that they got to provide it for they provided it to me in exchange for review. Um, so basically, Court of Miracles is a reimagining of the story of Les Miserables and of what might have happened if the French Revolution had not come to pass. Um, it is also based around liberty, family, and treachery. So, um, from what I know, this story is basically based around, like, the fact of how would things have played out if they hadn't have had the revolution um, of the people who were being put down by the nobility of that time that um, Les Miserables was written. So... Basically, I don't want to go, I don't want to jump into the storyline and cause too much in the way of spoilers, as I kind of feel better to just enjoy this one and jump into it, sort of not knowing as much, but just sort of basic outlines of the story and the characters and what the guilds are and that sort of thing, um, just to give you a taste of it. Um, because for me, I found the fact that I didn't really know much except for the fact that it was a Les Miserables retelling. It really did intrigue me a lot more. Um, so, yeah, basically, um, instead, as I said, I'll go into descriptions of, like, the guilds in the storyline and some of the characters as best I can to give you an idea of this amazing storyline, plot, world-building, and characters. Um, some of these guilds I haven't fully explained because it didn't actually go into them as much in the book. Um, and so I'm hoping that um, you'll find out more about the other guilds with book two. Uh, but I will describe the guilds as best I can from my knowledge of reading the book. So basically our guilds are the Guild of Thieves. Basically this is self-explanatory is it's a guild of different types of people who steal from others and bring items back to the guild in exchange for gold. And the guild takes part of the profits. So it's basically people like cats who steal or thieve from buildings, dogs who basically steal from people in the everyday daylight, blah, blah, blah. Um, guild of Flesh. This is basically people who, I guess, work in the sex slaves, sex slaves kind of um I don't want to say the actual name because I don't want to sound racist or derogatory or anything of it because I really don't have anything against them but it's basically people who basically work in the sex industry I guess you could say um but basically these people are drugged up on poppy in an effort to control them and is controlled by Lord Kaplan who Basically also sells ladies off to slavers who work on the high seas. So there is sort of themes of that, but it's also about being able to free these people from this slavery and how things are going. So it's it's not just basically about slavery or anything like that. It's more about, yes, there is the issue of these things happening, but it's also about trying to free people from that situation. Um, our next guild is the Guild of Smugglers. But basically, these work, from what I know, these work exclusively on the ocean slash seas, smuggling goods and items between different countries and cities. I don't really know much more than that because that was basically all that came in with this first book. Um, the Guild of Dreamers makes po the poppy Lord Catlin uses on his girls as well as, the, as, well as drugs, etc., I don't know any more than that because, again, Guild of Dreamers didn't really come into book one. Um, Guild of Letters, basically these are the accountants slash mathematicians of the court, making sure all paperwork and currency is in order, um, that things are fair, 
as well as doing audits of the different guilds, making sure they're sticking by the thieves rule, thieves guild laws and everything like that. Um, and yeah, that's sort of what I know about the Guild of Letters. The Guild of Beggars, um, also known as the Ghosts, I guess you could say. But this is run by Lord Orso, the only one who is, isn't afraid of Lord Kaplan and the house that um, abides completely to the law of the guilds. Also known as the Ghosts, as I said, um, as they come and go like ghosts, so basically they can be there one minute, vanish the next. Um, also, if they take revenge, they do it with hands and teeth, not weapons. Um, basically, they're considered the second most deadly guild just because of the size of their numbers and how they do things. And we got the Guild of Assassins, um, run by Lady Charlotte Corday. This is a guild able to be hired when you want someone assassinated. Pretty much self-explanatory too, I guess. Assassinations are done either by blade or poison. Basically, this guild has um, two branches um, of either poison or knives. And... You typically don't notice when they're around due to how stealthy they are, um, which I guess is assassins. <laughs> and the last two guilds, the Guild of Chance and the Guild of Mercenaries, they aren't really covered in the first book at all. So um, I don't really have any explanations or descriptions to give you about those guilds, but I'm hoping to find out more about them in book two. Um Pretty much also all of these guilds are bound together by certain laws in order to prevent war between the guilds. Um, there is also a binding acceptance in the Court of Miracles, regardless of race, age and gender, and there's a general dis and a general dislike for the king and queen of France, um, as well as the lords and ladies of the nobility because of how they treat and look down upon um, the commoners and poor people of the land and the vindictive things they do. Um, with by the nobles and the queen and king in order to stay in control. Um, then we've got our main characters for book one. The Court of Miracles are Epony, who is um, a cat burglar in the Thieves Guild. Her sister El Azelma, who is a basically a minor part, after being taken by Lord Catwin for the Guild of Flesh joins after stealing the amulet of the Dauph Dauphin of France um, to have protection from her father, Theonarda. Um, she's also doing all she can to protect her new sister, Cosette, from Theonarda and Lord Kaplan. So it is sort of going into similar characters, I guess, that you have in the original Les Miserables, but kind of in different situations. Um and basically, if Pony goes so far as to approach the Guild of Beggars, asking them to take Cosette so she is protected from Lord Catelyn. Um, Cosette, basically a Pony's new sister and part of the Beggars Guild in order to try and guarantee her safety from Lord Catelyn. However, even after joining the Ghost, she's still not safe and eventually is captured by Lord Catelyn. However, all does not play out as it seems and I'm not going to go into that. We've also got Javert, um, and Javert isn't the male detective in this one. It's actually a female detective, and it's a female detective or investigator with revenge set in her heart at Le Mer, or basically, um, I can't think of his name now, but it's basically the, the mayor who, in the original Les Miserables, takes Cosette as his daughter to look after her, after her mother, um, dies but um, we don't know exactly what happened between them except for a guess that the mayor broke her heart um, she's also all about bringing law and justice to the land and rooting out basically rooting out the rebels or basically finding the rebels um, the mayor has a blood debt to a pony after she breaks him free from prison whilst rescuing Lord also and he basically repays his debt by helping to keep a pony safe and helping with the pony's plans. With regards to Lord Kaplan, um, also, and this was mentioned with Javert, 
I'm assuming he had a relationship previously with her that ended badly. And I hope to see this covered more in book two. Um, basically, I think I'll leave it at that for characters, as I don't want to leave too many spoilers with regards to the storyline. As each character sort of plays an integral part in the way the storyline pans out. And I want to do my best to limit spoilers as much as possible. Hence, not going into the characters of... Theonata, Lord Kaplan, Lady Corday, Montepanis, Lady Corday's Master of Knives, Gavroche, etc. As not all these characters play major roles in the Court of Miracles book one, but they still have an integral part in the storyline as a whole. Um, overall, I, I really did love this book, and I cannot wait for book two, and I really felt it fit well with the reimagining of Les Miserables in the French Revolution. I would definitely recommend picking it up. Um, finally, thank you again to HarperCollins Australia for providing me with a copy of this book in exchange for a review. I really did love every minute of reading this book. I was totally absorbed in the storyline from page one. And if you enjoyed this book review, please leave a like, subscribe, comment, as I always love hearing from you. And I hope you have a great day and a happy evening. And enjoy reading or colouring or whichever you're doing. And yeah, I will see you later.